Allison Krauss on free TV. Uh, I'm making a new sheath for my Nesmuk. And uh, life just can't be any better. It's not a whole lot different, but it's less boxy than that one. <clears throat> so, uh, basically, how... And it took me forever to commit myself to actually cut leather. Because <laughs> leather, leather is expensive. And thick leather is even more expensive. So, uh, it took a lot of commitment <laughs> to draw a sheath, cut it out, and uh, commit myself to cutting it out. And after I did the first sheath, I was okay. But uh, I guess the fear is, you know, I'm on a budget here, and I haven't sold any knives. As a matter of fact, I'm giving three knives away. Yeah, three. Uh, the one where work our live stream knife, I'll be giving that away too. And uh, I, I do have some knives that I'll be selling as soon as I make sheets for them and put their edges on. So that money will have to go immediately to buying leather and uh, replacing stuff that I've used in the shop. And uh, I really want to get a stable uh, wood stabilizing. I want to stabilize my own wood, basically. Uh, I don't feel comfortable selling knives with handles that are not stabilized. And the reason is, and I found this out through Lisa Booker and then through do, doing a Lisa Booker bought a knife. And doing a little more research, I understood what happened. What had happened was, here in Louisiana, it's very humid. Or at Texas, I'm in Texas now, but same type of humidity. And uh, I made the knife, and uh, the pins were nice and level, like these. You know, the pins were all level with the wood. No strange humps. You didn't feel the pins when you rubbed your finger across it. And uh, I sold it to Lisa Booker. And a few months later, she let me know that the pins were hurting her hands. And what had happened was the humidity level is so much less where she is, the wood shrank and uh, let the pins be exposed. All that hard work of polishing and making them all level and pretty, all that hard work and made me realize that I either had to use nothing but stabilized wood or used hardwoods that are far less susceptible to expanding and contracting with absorbing or or uh, drawing out of wood. So I got to get me a stabilization thing so I can stabilize my own wood. I can't afford to buy stabilized wood. It's, you know, 40 to $50 for uh, stabilized handles. And uh, I cannot ethically add an extra $40 onto the price of a knife that I'm already getting a you know, a price that most people would balk at. So, anyway, I'm going to try to replace all the stuff I've used, and then when I start making knives for sale again, I'm going to save, oh, it's going to be about three bills, three, 300 bucks to buy what I need to buy, maybe a little more, to uh, start stabilizing my own wood. And then all the wood on all the knives I make will be stabilized by me. So I'll feel real, real good about being able to do that, I'll have a uh, a better uh, feeling when I sell a knife that when it leaves here, it's going to look like it, the handle's going to look as good five years from now as it did when it left here. So anyway, I talk a lot. So here we go. I'm fixing to commit myself to cutting this out and uh, I'll get this side cut out. And then what I'll do is I'll fold it over on this line like that and then trace around it. And cut this side out. All right, I got that cut out. It's a little bit round on the end here, but I'm going to live with that. I may tweak it down the road. Uh, I have the uh, <clears throat> the belt loop here. I have to. I'm going to tape that on right there. Now I need to uh, cut the web that goes in here. And the reason you have to sew a web in here, because the first time you slide that knife in there, it'll cut all them strings that hold it closed. All right, I gotta go find some tape to put this together, and then I'm gonna uh, make the webbing. All right. 
I make the webbing a little bit larger because uh, what I do is when I put the leather together, the webbing sticks out a little bit. And that way, when I glue this down, stitch it on top of the webbing, the middle sticks out a little bit. And then I put it on my sander and it kind of blends the middle in with each of the other sides. And uh, you have a real hard time. You have to really look close to see the seams on the leather. Because I, you know, I wax them, beeswax, and then I uh, burnish them with my power burnisher. So, all right, I'm fixing to commit. I hope uh, I'm not wasting the leather. I uh, just talked to my friend Ricky Wallace on the phone, and he's outside sitting on his front porch, but he's fixing to go make some knives, or he's got handles he's working on. So, uh, he's busy too. Let me catch up. <laughs> All right, here we are. I'm fixing to commit. We'll see you in a minute if it's uh, going to work. All right, just to go ahead and get it out of the way, I went ahead and screwed up and cut one out backwards. So, uh, someday, if anybody who ever wants a left handed sheath Nesmuk, <laughs> I'll have one. <laughs> but uh, anyway, here's. Here's what you gotta remember. Either turn your pattern upside down or turn your leather upside down. Alrighty, let me uh, get this together. All right. <clears throat> well, I don't know if I, I think I did tell you the story, but I'll tell you again. My uh, BC Blades. Uh, <laughs> Ricky's son, Ricky Jr. Rick, Ricky Wallace, Rick Wallace Knives, Outdoors, Fishing, and Chevy Repair. He, uh, his son, among other things, does laser, uh, not laser, what is that machine called? Where it makes stuff out of plastic, you know? Uh, something to do with lasers. Or it just might be magic. I don't know. Well, anyway, in my last sheath, I put this on upside down. And uh, hold on, I'm going to sneeze. Whoa, I think I blew some brains out on that one. Anyway, I put it on upside down. <laughs> and for some reason, my brain thought this was backwards, that the engraving was backwards or something. So uh, I contacted Ricky's son. If I already told you this story, I'm sorry. A lot's happened between yesterday and today. And uh, I told him, man, I think this is uh, backwards. And he sent me the same picture I sent of him, except he sent it back to me, turned over <laughs> the right way. I had turned this thing upside down, and looking at it, my brain would not let me think that it was upside down. I thought it was just backwards, and uh, boy, did I feel stupid. But anyway, there's what it looks like, uh, right side up. And uh, so here's the sheath so far. Now... I've got to uh, take this tool. I'm not sure what it's called and what it does from where I'm going to sew this back here. Rather than have this big chunk of leather sticking up off of it, you, you shave a little bit of leather off of this. You kind of taper it or it's a much neater transition from this to this. And uh, that's what I'm going to do now. You start, oh, right about here. And you start tapering, shaving some leather off, making it thinner as you come down to the tip here. So let me get that done. Oh, and then I'm going to uh, take some glue and glue it there. And when it dries, I'm going to punch, take my punch, <coughs> and uh, punch my holes. I Actually, before, you know what? Before I do that, i got to stain this. And uh, i got to figure out what color I'm going to stain this. But uh, let me get that staining done first, and then I'm going to do all that. I like that color. That's called uh, dark brown. <laughs> How odd. <laughs> Look at the price of that. Uh, I've only used it once, and uh, I will get probably two, three, maybe four sheets out of this. Everything is expensive. Everything. 
All right, uh, I'm gonna give this, the, it's got alcohol in the dye, so I'm gonna let it dry a minute, and then I'm going to glue that right there. And uh, when the glue dries, I'm gonna sew it, and then I'm gonna fold it over and glue this in. And uh, don't forget to, your webbing, don't forget to dye the inside of your webbing. And uh, since that's gonna be exposed when it's folded over, don't forget to dye that. And uh, the inside of your sheath just, or you know, the top third of it, just so when people look down on it, it looks all the same color. Okay, let me uh, let this dry a few minutes, and then I'll glue that down and uh, go ahead and sew it. All right, I got that sewed on. Now, I'm going to fold it over and put the webbing in. I like that uh, where it lightens up, where you bend it. It gives it like an antique finish. Cool. All right, uh, I'm going to put that webbing in, glue it, clamp it. Uh, I have these uh, forks here to drive down through here the groove the sewing groove the stitching groove now i do not like these chiseled these diamond shaped uh points i've just ordered some uh, round chisels some round punches from ebay and uh, i have not liked these since day one and i've looked and looked and looked and i cannot find the round ones and i found them online so i've ordered them and uh, when I get them, I will stop using these diamond-shaped punch because uh, they leave a really ugly hole. Okay, we're getting there. Now I go, uh, what I did was take my razor knife and trim off the excess around the edge. And now I go put this on my sander, my belt sander. I clean this up real smooth. And then I come back here and I melt some bees. Well, actually, I, I black the edge. And some people use the, uh, you know, edge black. They make special for this. I just use a magic marker. Uh, I got to melt that knot, though. And then go sand this and then black it and then beeswax it and then uh, slick it down with a high-speed slicker. Okay. I don't have the edge slicked up yet. I'm gonna do that now. But I uh, just wanted to show you what we got so far. All right, let me go do the beeswax and the high speed uh, burnishing and it'll be done. All right, one down. Okay, I think that's it for today. Today is uh, Tuesday. Tomorrow I'm going to come out here and uh, I am going to alter this a little bit. I have to make this a little bit wider right here. Because uh, whoever gets this knife, if you win it, be careful putting it back in the sheath. Because uh, it's almost as wide as this here and you could cut that thread. If you're careful, it'll be all right. But uh, just the next one, I'm going to make a little wider up here, about an eighth inch, maybe a quarter inch wider, so that possibility won't exist. But this is done. Taking it to the house. And tomorrow, I'll be back with uh, maybe a couple of caddos, because those go a lot quicker. They're about half the size of this sheath. See you tomorrow.